Welcome to the Brain People Podcast, a show where four mental health experts team up to bring you practical tools for overcoming mental health challenges. The Brain People don't replace your doctor or therapist, but we will give you some extra tools to help you on your journey. So join us as we fight mental illness, one episode at a time. Welcome to the Brain People Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Daniel Bynus, and I'm joined again for part two of our series on dealing with crisis. And I'm joined today by Chris and Robin Denbenston, and they've been sharing with us about how they went through a major personal crisis in their own lives when their daughter was just nine years old and she uh, developed a very severe uh, condition with her heart from a viral infection that could have easily killed her. And we've been uh, discussing how they came through this crisis, how they were able to rely on God's promises and how they were able to actually grow through this experience. And this information and uh, this experience what, that we're sharing is really specifically to support our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. But these principles are also wonderful and applicable to anyone dealing with difficult situations in their lives. So welcome again, Chris and Robin. Thank you for being here with us today. And uh, for this segment, we'd really like to talk a little bit uh, more about the long haul, about you know dealing with a crisis that isn't just happening for maybe a day or a few days or maybe even a, a few weeks, but uh, can go on sometimes for months. And uh, I'd like to hear a little bit uh, from both of you on that, your experience with that and some of the things that we can do to cope with a trauma, a crisis that isn't going away in just a few days. Yeah, I, I guess if you were to ask my daughter what was the hardest part, she would say it was the waiting. You know, every day, every morning she got up and she was just waiting in an intensive care unit kept alive by an experimental machine. And she was waiting, not knowing what would ever come. And every day she'd say, when am I going to get to go home? You know, when am I going to get out of here? When, when will, and, you know, um, that was a struggle that we had to deal with uh, every day. And, and what we would say is we don't know, but God does. And we know that our plans aren't always perfect, but his plans always are. So we have to trust not only that he has a plan in place, but that the timing of his plan will will be perfect. And, you know, I mean, we'd have loved to tell her, you know, in three weeks, we're going to get out of here. But um, nobody, nobody knew. You don't know when the crisis is going to end. And I like to say when we want to ask God, like, when will this end? A better thing to do is just ask him to work his plan, you know. Um, cause when we're saying, when's it going to end, we're just thinking about ourselves and our situation. But when we ask him to work his plan, then we're focused on, you know, what his plan is and what he can do. And, you know, instead of worrying about when it's better to just focus in and work on what we need to do today. Yeah, no, I, that, that is really an important uh, point. And, and I think it's so easy, especially in the midst of crisis to get focused on ourselves and what we want and what the outcome we know must be right. But instead turning our focus and saying, okay, God, I don't know exactly what your plan is, but I want to discover that. I want to be part of that. I want to submit to that and work in harmony with you and not try to uh, twist your arm, God, to make it, make my will your will, right? And and that can be hard because, of course, when especially when it comes to our children, our families, I mean, we're like, no, why, well, God, why wouldn't you want the same thing, right? Yeah. You can, you know, you can find yourself in a dark place, you can find yourself discouraged. You can find yourself growing weary as the days go on. And we all experience that. And I know those in Ukraine surely are at some point where they're weary now. And as a parent, all you wanna do is protect your children and give them some sense of normalcy. And um, I, I would just say, you know, through any given day, 
just reminding yourself that God is in control, uh, that God is absolutely in the business of doing miracles. He is a God of miracles and that we can place our hope and trust in him. And oftentimes, you know, an interesting quick story, Grayson was hooked to this machine. And so one day we got to go up to the roof of the hospital with our nurse. Our whole family was there. We went up and, you know, we were standing up there. It was a Sunday and I look out and I see this car about to come and crash into it. But no, there's a stop sign. And I can see all this from my vantage point. And I thought, oh my goodness, all this while I'm sitting in this hospital going, when is God going to bring a heart? When is he going to heal my daughter? When, when, when? I it should be today. Why? How come it wasn't yesterday? But God, he can see everything. He can see what's coming this way and what's coming that way. He he has the plan because he knows and he can see. We can't from where we're at in our struggle in that day, just trying to get by. But he has a plan and we have to trust it and keep reminding ourselves to go back to that. And he'll carry us through it. I, I love that visual of really seeing the big picture. And he re he really does. We see from such a finite level, but he does see that big picture and he knows all the pieces that need to be a part of that. Now, when people are going through crisis and it's not going away anytime soon, of course, like we've been talking, you know, trusting that God sees that bigger picture, that is key. That's foundational. Uh, are there other things that either of you uh, figured out going through that process uh, that were key for you to maintain your sanity. Of course, like we said, hanging on to God is is key. But are there any other things? Yeah, for sure. Um, as hard as it is in the middle of a crisis, you got to be looking for joy. Um, as hard as it is, laugh, smile. Um, you can't just sit there and worry. Cause you're in this constant state of worry and, and what can you do to get out of that? Um, you, you've got to try to find some joy. And one of the things we did was let's think every morning when we wake up, what are some things we're thankful for? You know, Hey, this crisis is terrible. It's just completely overwhelming us, but you know what? We have things to be thankful for and start thinking about those things. Um, start thanking God for the, the things that you have to be thankful for um, and, and seek to have some joy and some, you know, again, it, it, there's nothing wrong with trying to uh, not like being in a hospital is fun, but figure out a way to, to have some fun, to smile and to laugh um, because it, it really helps. The, again, that, that sounds really hard. And I couldn't even imagine sitting in uh, Ukraine with bombs going off and thinking I need to try to have some fun. Um, but it's just the thought of being thankful and, and, and keeping your sanity by um, enjoying something. Absolutely. No, I, I love that. And it reminds me of what Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, where he says, give thanks in all things, right? And, and at least in the translation that I know, it doesn't say for all things. But, you know, in other words, he's saying, like, even in the midst of the most difficult situations, we can give thanks. And it also reminds me, I think he practiced that very well, right? When Paul and Silas were singing in prison, I mean, they were in a great deal of pain. And yet they were still, they found joy because they were looking beyond the immediate circumstances to something better so what yeah it's actually physically impossible to stay focused on something negative when you're speaking something positive or when you're having gratitude or naming five little things that you are thankful for maybe that's a sip of water maybe that's a blanket maybe that's you know we made it through the hour without you know having a crash of this machine. I mean, there's just so many things The the sky is blue, you know, and, and it, it does sound weird to laugh, but we laughed a lot and it helps. And there's something within your family, you know, our family is just crazy anyway. And, you know, even in the darkest moments, you know, uh, several hours later, maybe you have a look with your loved one, a glance, you know, and you have like this funny little joke that you can bring it to the top and it helps so much. I cannot tell you enough how much it helps. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And, and it's interesting how even in the midst of those quote unquote dark times, there can be those highlights of joy. And now looking back, 
you're actually finding, remembering, wow, this was actually such an amazing bonding time for our family and uh, such an, a tremendous experience. And, and that's a beautiful thing. You know, going through the process doesn't always feel good, but now looking back, we're like, wow, there were so many blessings, which is a beautiful thing. Now, a lot of people that are going through a crisis, uh, I think, you know, they, they tend to go all out and have, you know, be on and trying to fix things and all of this. Maybe they're trying to trust God for that strength day by day. But there's also a human limit that I think we all have. Um, any thoughts that you have about the importance of taking care of ourselves and uh, making sure that we don't get into that burnout? Like, how can we avoid that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, even though you're not hungry, you you need to eat. You're, you know, we all need sustenance. Um, you know, eat food, eat eat something healthy. You know, um, if you can, uh, stay hydrated. Um, you know, take care of yourself. It's so easy to get lost in a crisis and you forget about the most simple things, such as you know, having food and drink and um, you know, it, it, it's almost impossible to sleep, but you have to rest. And um, uh, if, if, especially if you're in a caregiver scenario, you know, you got to come through for others. So you got to take care of yourself as well. And, you know, again, I just think, though, the way to do that is is, is to really focus on something that, that gives you some sense of joy and just build on that. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think it's just so important for all of our listeners to really remember that even if someone else is suffering and we're suffering too, but we still need to take the time to take care of ourselves, not in a selfish way, but because that will actually make us uh, stronger and more fit to do what God is calling us to do. I want to also uh, touch on hope. And I think this is key, especially, of course, when we're dealing with a long, a long haul crisis, but also like when things don't go the way that we want them to. And, and, and so I, I want to hear, of course, what happened with Grayson. She was waiting for that heart and, um, and, you know, I'm sure our audience is in suspense, like what, what happened there, but there are also there are situations where things can go all sorts of different ways. So how can people find hope regardless of of outcomes? And how do we deal with that? Yeah, I mean, things sometimes do not go the way we wanted. The outcome is not what we wanted. Um, as we were walking through this crisis with our daughter living in the hospital with her, um, our dear friends were walking through a crisis of their own with their nine month old baby at the time. He was born with a skin disease. Um, and sadly, he lost his battle at nine months um, while we were stuck in the hospital. And, you know, they had prayed and we were all praying that Jameson would be healed and that, uh, you know, the Lord would heal him this side of heaven. But Todd and Melissa, his mom and dad, um, you know, they knew that God might choose to heal him in heaven. And that is exactly the way it went. And while it was excruciating and so hard for them, their faith today is stronger than it ever was, knowing that that was God's plan. Again, we don't understand God's ways sometimes, and his ways just are not our ways. But his grace is sufficient. Uh, and his power is made perfect in our weakness. And I know that they, um, you know, completely counted on his strength to get through these many years since his passing. But you're right. Sometimes it doesn't go the way we want, but God is there for that. And he will sustain you and hold you. I love that. And, you know, it, it can be so difficult. We don't all always understand why. Um, and that's a question that I think is okay to ask God, but I love, you know, I was looking at your crisis survival uh, guide and I love the question that you really reframe that and say, Hey, you know what, instead of asking so much, why it's like, what, you know, what, what is this for? Like, what, what is your plan and what do you want me to do as, as part of your plan, God? And I think that, 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 that really focuses again, more back on God and trusting in him and realizing that he, he sees the end from the beginning. And, and I think sometimes we get so focused on the outcomes here on this earth 
And God is much more interested in the eternal outcomes, you know, and, and I, and I think there's, there's, there's times and there's people that I've met where it's like, wow, they went through this, they lost maybe this loved one or this happened to them. Maybe it was a, a, a loss of a body function or vision or whatever it is. And yet they're still trusting God. What a witness that that is, you know, it, it, for God's sustaining power. And I think sometimes I can almost be a more powerful witness in, in some ways than if things work out great. And then, you know, they're still trusting God and it that encourages other people to say, okay, well, I, I, I can trust in God too. Romans 8, 28 is a big one. Um, you know, um, God works all things for good for those who love him or are called according to his purpose. When you're in the middle of a crisis, you can sit there and go, how in the world is he going to work this for good? You know, um, there's nothing good going on right now, but that's not what that's saying. It's saying, you know, in the long haul, in the big scheme of things, in everything he can see, he's going to work it for good if we love him and we're called according to his purposes. And, you know, like you said, when, when we're asking God, why could this, why did this happen? Why, why did this have to, you know, a better thing is to say, you know what, you know, what's going on. What should I be doing next? What should I be praying for right now? What can I do for my next step of faith? Because I know you're going to, you're going to work this for good. So I have hope in that. I have trust in that. And, you know, it, it, it may not turn out how I want it to, but I'm still going to trust you because there's hope in that. Um, I think about one of the most amazing things was, um, you know, we were so worried every day, yet Robin walked through the intensive care unit of that hospital singing praise song. And everybody knew it was her little girl on the machine, yet she was walking around singing praise songs. And people were like, where does she get that hope? That, you know, you can do that. And, you know, uh, faith is most vivid and most powerful when you're walking through the darkness. And that was just a little example of, of her showing that light of, of finding joy in the midst of, of crisis, because we know there's hope. Absolutely. Well, that, that, that is so beautiful. And I, and I believe that some of those things that happen and, you know, people are watching that as, as far as they're watching how we deal with crisis, that it can be a savor of life unto life. It can be an encouragement for people to look to that source of strength and hope that we have as Christians. So before we close, I know our audience is, I'm sure, wondering what what happened? <laughs> what happened with Grace, and what was the outcome here? And uh, where, where, where is the family now? <laughs> well, um, Grayson received a heart after waiting for four and a half months on that life support machine. Um, it was the heart of a sixteen-year-old boy named Brian. Uh, we have never met his family, but we did exchange a letter with them, uh, and. Two, less than two weeks after receiving that heart, she came home and our Christmas tree was still up, you know, because we had everything had happened on Christmas Eve and we had Christmas in May that year. It was really fun. Uh, but she was able to regain her strength and, and go right into fifth grade when school started and played on the basketball team. And I mean, she was out there oh, running and, you know, she doesn't have any um anything holding her back. She's taken medicine every day since the day of her transplant to keep her body from ejecting that heart. She'll always take that. Uh, but Grayson went to college and met her husband there and they just got married um, last June. So I'm actually here in their home right now. And um, we're just so grateful for what the Lord has done. And our boys, you know, um, you know, obviously witnessed what the Lord did for their sister and um, you know, they've, they've both seen us, you know, as their parents walk through a crisis and learned, you know, what we learned from it too. And the Lord used that to show, show them and teach them as well. Um, but we just stand in awe of, of what God did. Wow. What a beautiful story. And it's just amazing the way God works and he's continuing to work in your family and uh, through you to really touch other people as well. So I want to, in closing, just highlight uh, for our listeners to remind us, we need to keep that big picture in mind, realizing we only see 
the details we see from a very finite level. God sees that bigger picture. And even in the midst of crisis, it's so important to cultivate that gratitude, that joy, uh, and encourage one another to remember like, hey, what can we still be thankful for even in the midst of all of this? And don't forget, you know, to take care of ourselves. Um, again, not in a selfish way, but because God actually asks us, he says that we need to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's okay to take some time to rest, to eat, to drink water, to sleep. And, and then, you know, again, even though things don't always go the way we want, we can have that hope because like Chris said, Romans 8, 28, right? All things do work together for good. So I also want to remind our, our listeners that you can download uh, for free uh, the Crisis Survival Guide, and it's on our website, beautifulmindshealth.com, beautifulmindshealth.com. And if you go to the uh, resources tab, the menu, and then the resources tab, you can download it. And it's both in English and it will also be translated in Ukrainian as well. So thank you so much, Chris and Robin, for joining us today. I thank you so much for sharing your story and, and, and sharing your faith in an amazing God who can do beyond what we can ask or think. Thanks for listening. To hear more episodes, find us on social media or support us financially, visit thebrainpeoplepodcast.com. 